Hello and welcome back to Farmer Simulator 22 and the Survival Series. Right, so it's now April. We have progressed and I do like these types of months. The grass starts coming up, it's sunny, where you can obviously get quite a bit of field work done. And uh, yeah, it just looks a lot better. It really does look a lot better without the snow. So a few little changes. I've added a few more tiny little placeables in. I think it like, makes the setting a little bit more better with us doing quite a bit of logging. So I just put some of these bits and bobs in. And um, I've also adjusted the trigger on the uh, sheep pasture that we put in in the last episode. So it now fills water up from uh, pretty much around about where it is now. So it just makes it more, it just makes more sense. I can't get inside and the only thing I could have done was probably modify this, made it a bigger entrance, but why not just put the trigger on the outside? So that's that. We sorted that out. Um, we may as well get a couple more sheep, I think. Sean's on his own. I don't want him to be too lonely, so let's let's grab let's grab two two of these, just two because it is a little bit expensive and we don't want because they are producing heat while well, Sean's producing wool straight away. So if we just get two of these. It's a thousand pound. Why not? Job done. There you go. So we've got two and one, so there should be three now with Sean on his Todd. Um, but at least we know Sean. He stands out. Um, but yeah, we've got enough feed. The, this bale's still quite full. Um, and this trough's only holding about three. I think it was about 400, wasn't it? Yeah. No, the trough, sorry, holds 3,000 and it's 400 in the bale. So that's that done. Um, I have been doing quite a bit. So I did mention that we're going to make our way up here when we do the clearing. So what I've done is I've tried to just put in a few more fences going in the right direction. So it's now parallel with the direction we need to be heading which is that way so I have chopped down quite a few trees as you can see um, and I did sell all the other logs that were remaining and picked up the, the money quite a bit actually um, I've spent a bit but wasn't too much so we're well, well we're just over 20,000 now so we have got a lot more coming in from these logs and then as you can see we've got a hell of a lot to go out into and now I do want to put in again some more buildings eventually when we get the the money so we're talking a little bit of time ahead now because obviously we've got to make the clearing go sell the logs and uh, bring in the money first before we do this but i do want to get a cow barn and i do like that one that was sixty thousand. i do like it i think it's just about the right size um i think this pasture here as well holds 15 sheep so the cows we're never going to be having a massive amount of animals really um we probably should be trying to make our own field eventually and obviously bring in more income that way um, doing silage as well is a really good earner for money so eventually we'll, we'll have some animals we'll have some sheep chickens and um, cows who knows we might even get pigs eventually uh, but we will be placing these items in and growing out in that direction and eventually we will be heading it across to where the grass field is so we could make it so it kind of we have two entrances into the farm we have one going through all the eventual buildings that we put in down here and uh, uh, sheds and so on and then obviously the normal way that we've been coming in. I think that makes sense. It will look pretty good as well. So there's lots to do in that direction, but we just need to keep chipping away um, and obviously taking the logs um, and selling them as we as we get the chance to. So in this episode, what I'm going to be doing is planting in the crop. There's a few things I want to do before that, but I want to just talk to you about the field itself. So let's just quickly jump over to there. So here we are, we're at the field. It's pretty much in the exact same state of left it bar one change. There's no stones. So I've, I've, I have picked up the stones. And the way I did it was quite awkward, but it was the only thing that I could do with a reasonable cost to it. So what I did is I purchased this, which is like a stone bucket. Now it's supposed to go on the front of your vehicle, but I haven't got anything that's got a three-point linkage on the front yet, or a PTO or anything like that. Uh, so for this we only need do need uh, three-point linkage so I haven't got anything like on the front so I had to put it on the back but then I have to reverse around so I had to reverse around all the field and uh, yeah it was a bit of a pain but it worked that's the main thing so we got all the stones out so if I just take off weeds you can see that there's no more stones in this field obviously we've got weeds but they're going to disappear when we start planting in and then we're going to roll but we've got the roll in so the only thing that was really needed from this was to, to be mulched that's the only negatives we can have from this crop but it's only, what, 2.5%, so it's not that much of an impact anyway. I mean, at the end of the day, if we get a way of mulching, which is not that costly, uh, we can do that. But it's not the priority. It shouldn't be top of the list of things we need to buy. So 
it just made sense to get the stones out because they are obviously going to have an impact on the on the vehicles themselves and it does cost quite a bit to repair a vehicle i am using a mod in all and i have to declare that i am using a mod that's made it so i can customize it because uh, it, originally it's just too much money it really is too much money sometimes it's, it costs more to repair a vehicle than it does to buy a new vehicle so it just made, made sense for me to try and modify it to more in line to what the prices would be so I've done that, but it still obviously costs quite a bit of money. It's, a, it's still a few thousand pound, and uh, yeah, it just makes sense to pick this up for about seven hundred pound and collect the stones. So I am just dumping them here for the meantime because of the fact that there's not much else I can do with them. I can turn them into lime, but I'd have to get a processing uh, plant thing for that. So I decided just to plonk them there, make a pile, and then eventually, you never know, we can try and do that with the stones. So I did get a good comment as well in the last episode about the sprayer. Why, why, why do you use the sprayer? Why not use a weeder? Uh, they're quite forward affordable. And yeah, they are. They are, but I bought this sprayer not just for the use of using herbicide, where obviously opens up the idea of us using liquid fertilizer as well as a, a solid fertilizer that we've got. But it is always good to have a sprayer. And this was a pretty good price, and I do like it. So And it fits well with the John Deere's as well. So you never know. We might buy a weeder as well. Um, I mean, it does make more sense to do that as well because obviously it won't have any impact on the crop. Uh, but looking at weeders, I mean, I found one, if I just quickly show it, that's a um, really good price. It's kind of like a chain harrow, so it technically isn't a weeder, but that's the way that it works within Farming Simulator. Um, it's a chain harrow. So where am I looking now? Weeders. There we go. So really what we want is this one, 9,500. I mean, everything else is too big and too costly. This is the one I was going to use, um, but I tested it out. And the problem is it, it drops too low and you can't manually adjust it. So it drags along the ground too much that the tractor doesn't even actually move that well. So I don't know if that's the problem with the mod or the fact that maybe I need more front weight. Uh, but yeah, it just drops too low. So it kind of digs into the ground. Uh, if I could just lower it myself, I could lift it up a tiny little bit and then I could scrape across the ground. Um, but yeah, I did test it out because I have had that issue before and as you can see here um, in, all, in all fairness, I did purchase it test it out and then sell it because obviously if it's not going to work We don't want it. So we're going to work on this field anyway We need to get some seeds uh, because I've used up all the seeds and I have been busy um, on the grass field So I'll show you that in a second But we do need to get some seeds which we'll go and do in a second because the trailer is still up at the shop um, so we'll go up there buy some more seeds and we'll get some soybeans in the ground That's what I've decided to go with some soybeans. I think that'll be a good earner um, And it makes good. It does make good sense. In fact, let's jump into the John Deere now and We'll head in the direction of the store because there's a couple things I want to do So I'm gonna go past the grass field um, And I have been really busy on that I did mention in the last episode that it, I needed to plant my own, my own grass seeds in there make it my own field um, and then obviously I can do lime and all that kind of stuff and fertilize it and keep a good um, check on it because it now shows up on the map. So I did that and I planted in grass and it's growing nicely. It's at the first stage. Um, obviously we're in April, so I, I, I planted it in March. Uh, yeah, and it's worked well. Now I have expanded it out as well. I did chop down the three trees that were kind of just at the top left if we're looking directly from the road into the field. So I did remove them and I kind of went to the boundary of my field the, the maximum I could and as you can see it's now a different texture you can tell um, that it's not going to look like this anymore it's going to be our own grass field texture um, but this is it we're at 90% yield bonus the only thing I didn't do again was mulch but I did spread lime I have uh, rolled it and I also um, fertilized a little bit of it because it was already maximally fertilized in the middle uh, which is good because it now shows you the size field it was and the side field and the size it is now so you can see that i have expanded quite a bit now it has had rolling like i said it's had lime um, the only thing that's gonna it needs is it's another layer of fertilizer around the edges uh, but if we go over here the good thing now is it does show up and it can tell me if it's growing which it is you can see it's in like the a dark stage but actually I think it's like three out of four no two out of three sorry growth stage so this will be ready soon and we can start doing some silage and we can start testing out that new bunker we got but yeah look at it it's massive we've got a massive field we really have so that's that done which is good we've now got a proper grass field uh, something that we can rely on a little bit more and get a bit more information and feedback from uh, from the game itself right so we're just gonna head to the shop now I'm going to obviously buy the seeds so we can get the soybeans in the ground because it is the right time of year for that. Uh, perfect time to get the soybeans planted. 
Um, and, but on the way, we're going to make a stop. We're going to stop off because there's a harvester showcase that we want to go to. So what I did say to you is I want to try and find a really good harvester this time around. I want to find, you know, one that suits really well. And uh, I was having issues because it was, it was two miles an hour and I didn't want to adjust it or change it. I just thought, let's get something really good. Let's have something to work for to, in this year's harvest. So that it could be the logging that we do or it could be like silage. You know, anything that we do, we need to get some money for to buy a harvester. And that's what I'm working towards. I want to get something really good. So what I decided to do was do like a bit of a simulated showcase as if you were going to an expo and they were showing off some harvesters and they're all the, the harvesters that are actually in my price range. There's one right at the top end that's probably going to be a bit of a challenge but you never know. If we earn some good money we could try and go for it. And then there's ones that are probably around where we should be aiming for uh, but the good thing about it is that now on the map we can actually have a look at them before we buy. We can even maybe drive them just to check the working speed on them. Uh, but yeah, I did it. I tried to build in a bit of an area as well. So I was, I was thinking going forward in, in future episodes, we could do it with tractors, we could do it with a piece of equipment, maybe we want a new cedar. We can just get stuff out so we can have a look at it before we buy it, just to make sure it's right for what we need. Uh, the only time that won't work is if we are looking at the used items, because the used items are quite unique. They pop up randomly at different percentage um, uh, discounts and stuff. I think I've got it set to like it. Four, it can go up to 40 five percent it can obviously stay like as low as two percent um but yeah this will work pretty well going forward at least it gives us the opportunity to uh, make it a little bit different and interesting so let's park up this is what i've built got a few mods on the go here i have to admit but this is now part of the shop so this is where they're going to showcase items obviously don't drive into the cone that's not a never a good idea haven't got a clue what that collision is I'll be honest that's a bit of a weird one right so yeah this is what I did I just put a few items in obviously got parking spaces a few vehicles that we don't actually uh, own or anything um, and also I've made it so you can't skip through them um, but yeah this is the area so these are the harvesters we're going to try out hopefully you like what I've done I think it looks pretty cool very different but yeah, let's go through these harvesters then. So we'll start off from left to right, and we'll have a look at this one first. Right, so this is an old school Rost Selmash. Um, it costs £15,000. Um, it's got a 6,000 litre capacity, which is pretty good. Um, and the header itself costs £4,000. So, as you can see, it looks really old school inside. I mean, the textures aren't the best on that. Like, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but it's not like... Uh, it just it's 2d basically that's that's the 2d image on top of it um, so you can tell it kind of stands out quite a bit when you're in but i do like it and for what it offers for what we need this is perfect so we'll just take this for a little test drive i'm sure they won't mind it's got a beacon on as well but 15,000. that's not too bad so what we want to do is obviously drop this down there we go and uh, just check the working speed on it so it's already at six miles an hour, which is a massive bonus on what the original Ford was. So uh, what, let's say 19,000 for this then, total, that's what we're looking for. And that is really affordable. We can get that quite easy. I mean, we could buy it now, for example, and it wouldn't impact us because we've got a lot of logs to sell. So this is a good option. I mean, for what it offers, it ticks all the boxes, uh, but is it pretty? That's the thing. Is it a good looking kind of harvester? Probably not the best one. Right, so have a look at this one now. This is the Deutschfahr Starliner. Now, this one is quite expensive. It really is. This is £50,000. It holds a little bit less at like 5,000 something litres, and the, the header itself is 15000 So we're talking £65,000 to get this. I think this is really is on the uh, top end uh, for the Starliner. But in all fairness, look at, look at it inside. It, it does look a lot better. Um, it's quite nice and open, and I would actually, you know, if I was going to pick one, I have to say that uh, this Deutschfahr stands out. I just like the look of the Deutschfahrs as well. Always have. So let's test this out. Anything above two miles an hour is a bonus. And we're at six miles an hour. So we can do that. I mean, this header as well, it does look smaller. So that's also a negative on this. Not only does it cost more, but the header is uh, a lot smaller. So let me just part this one up and we'll have a look at the next one. 
Right, so this one's the John Deere 4400, and this one's reasonably priced. It really is pretty good. It looks good inside as well, and I have to say, this is one of my favourite ones. Now, this is only 21,000. It holds 6,500 litres. Uh, the header, the headers that come in really good options. You can get from like uh, four meters, I think, up to six meters. This one, I think, it was about five grand, but that's just the top of my head. I'd have to check it. Um, let's just have a quick look inside. You can see that everything is pretty good. It's all 3D. Um, and if we just try and have a look at this, six miles an hour, which is where you'd expect a harvester to be. So what we're we talking about, like under thirty thousand to have a full harvester. We've already got a John Deere tractor. Ooh, I'll just hit the uh, ice cream. Um, I think this is uh, pretty much the go-to one at the moment. Right, so this one, this one is the Bison uh, Z050 or something like that. Now, I have to say, visually, and the way this mod was made, this is my favourite by a mile, by a country mile. It's so, it's just amazingly done. It really is. The, the sound effects, everything details inside are spot on i really do like this uh problem is it's i think this is like 20 something odd thousand pound which is reasonably priced it's normal six miles an hour speed um it holds a lot, a lot less though in the tank but which is not too much of a problem it's three thousand liters in the tank a little bit over that uh it's the header the headers for this one alone this is left form 4.2 meter one this is seventeen thousand, and if you want the 5.2 meter one it's over 20 something thousand so that's where the negative comes on this. It is quite costly, but it's. I'm starting to think that this might be worth, um, you know, putting the money in for. Let me. Let's just show you the sound effects. I don't know if you can hear the engine on that, but it is spot on. Detail inside is again really high detailed. It really is. Uh, it looks nice inside as well. custom sound effects there even if we close and well unfold and fold the harvester and uh, I think if we you can also get the option to have straw and, uh, and obviously not have straw and stuff um, and you can get different bits on but it's the fact that a lot of it is just really well made it I'm not sure if we turn it on as you can see custom you can see that underneath there's a load of moving parts it, to me it was just brilliant I, I just thought it was such a well-made mod and it kind of stands out and you can see all the belts going around i really do like this one i really do and it is you know it's nice and the good thing about these bison ones there's a few and um, we can upgrade to it so that's that one do you like that one i think right now for me it's between the john deere and that so this is the upgraded version to that one. This is the Z060 now. Good thing about this, like I said, is that the pack comes with like upgrades all the way up to I think like Z090, and you're talking to like 100k for the top model. And they obviously are more modern the, the, the longer they go. So you, we could keep upgrading the Bisons, which uh, which which something is a good idea because we could start with what we've just seen before, move maybe up to this, and then so on, um, and get a different model each time. I mean that would be good. Uh, this one obviously holds more, it's like 5,600 litres, I think, in the tank. Um, everything else is the same, this is the same header. I think this is £44,000 to buy, and the header, again, is the same one, so we're talking like 20,000, basically. So it is expensive, we're talking over 60 grand here for this setup, uh, but again, really well made, dead nice inside, um, and like I said, we can always upgrade it. So if we start her up, you can see that there's even different sound effect for this on the engine. Nice to custom sound effects on that. So fold it again. Start her up. A quick look round again, so you can see again, really nice made. All moving parts inside, moving parts in the back. Where the straw's going to come out. Really nice. I do like, like I said, these you can't go wrong with these bisons. If you're doing a small farm or like vintage equipment, I think these are perfect. They really are perfect. So that's that one. And then finally, what I went with was a class dominator. Now, you can't really go wrong with the dominators. Um, this one's a smaller model. It's the Maxi. 
so it's the maxi dominator uh, and this is 60 grand it's 60 grand and then obviously you've got the header so this is probably the most expensive one with it being 60 grand just for the harvester and uh, then the header itself so probably a lot i can't remember exactly off the top of my head with this one i'd have to go and check but this even though class are really nice and stuff this is the top end um we're obviously going to aim for these ones before that we've we're talking about price and value i'd say that this one's probably the cheapest and it offers a lot of, a lot for the money that you pay but it obviously doesn't look the best let's be honest inside the cab as well and uh, the john deere really nice old school model small well-made mod you know it's it looks really nice in cab and it gives you the option to upgrade the uh, the header sizes and again it's all affordable it really is but it's far a little bit expensive i think for what it offers Header's is quite small as well but the bisons they do stand out for me but they are an investment because the headers cost so much good thing about it is if we buy this header and then this bison and then maybe a few harvests down the line we might be able to upgrade to this bison and keep the same header so that's a bonus uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section. If you were in my situation right now, which one would you go for? Which one would you pick? Remember that we can always do login. We can buy these. It doesn't really matter if, if it means that getting, the, for example, the class, and we need to obviously generate probably about 70 grand. We could do that in logs. It just means that we're probably going to be doing quite a few episodes of login. But yeah, let me know in the comment section. I'm, I'm interested to see what everyone's opinion is. Which one would you go for? Uh, in all fairness, I have to say that my favourite is this one. It really is. I think it's going to cost a little bit more than the John Deere. But I like the idea of upgrading the models as we go through. And I'll just give you a quick showcase of that so you can see what I was on about. Because So right now, this is the one we're looking at. 24 grand and a 17,000, I think it is. Yeah, 17,000 for the 4.2 metre header. Two different types. Uh, but that's the maximum size, so it's always going to be 4.2. Then we've got this one, which is 90,000, but that's the Z061. I just showed you the uh, 060, which is this. this is that one, which is an upgraded model of that anyway. Uh, it's, it's like 20 grand more. Um, it holds a little bit more as well, as you can see. No, it doesn't. It holds the exact same. Um, so I'd have to check that out. Maybe it's just a newer model. Um, so then we go to Z61, which is 94 grand. Uh, and as you can see, that holds actually holds less weirdly that holds less than the z060 so that is interesting that is that is interesting and then obviously the top model here is the z083 and as you can see it's a lot more modern so hopefully you enjoyed that like i said i'll be doing that a bit more now going forward if, if we're trying to buy something um what i'll do is i'll showcase them and we'll try and decide together which one to go for so let's go and buy some seeds and uh, hopefully because I haven't got a front loader or a wheel loader uh, the, the shop will kindly put it on the back of my trailer for me. So we just spent £800, I've got a bag of seeds on the back. Um, we drive past now and hopefully we'll see one of these harvesters on the yard at some point soon. But let's get back to the farm. I have been chinwagging quite a lot and chatting in this episode and we're already quite bit into it i'd say we're getting close to the 30 minute mark so i'll probably get all set up and start the uh, planting and uh, yeah we'll cut back in when it's all done
right, so there we go. Job done. That's the field all planted with soybeans. We consumed about 40%, 41% exactly, of the tank in the cedar. So that's that done. So I'll just pull it over, park it up there, and yeah, we'll just have a quick look. So all I need to do now is pretty much roll this, and we also need to sort out the weeds. It does say weed growing. So technically, we could go over this now um, with some herbicide and see what effect that has, take a bit of a risk because I'm not 100% certain on that, or we can wait for the first stage, get a weeder, and sort it out that way. Now, I might do that in between this episode and the next. Depends how far I want to progress in time. Uh, but if I do, I'll give you an update in the next episode. But on that note, I am going to leave the video there. So thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, give it a thumbs up, because that does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.